I've been in production mode this past week, so I kind of had to put editing on the back burner, so I didn't finish the long video I had planned for this week. So I thought I'd batch out something fairly simple that y'all might enjoy. A tour of probably the first project I ever finished that I was somewhat proud of. This is something I probably finished 15, 20 years ago. My open tote tool chest. Now this was built back when I was uh, just starting out working in the back corner of a small apartment. And it really does represent a beginning woodworker working with just the materials they can find because I didn't have a lot of machining uh, tools at the time. I think I had just gotten a small 10 inch bandsaw which helped me resize some of the wood here. But pretty much everything else here is just bought from the big box store. Uh, it's mainly red oak and pine uh, in the dimensions that were available from the big box store. I wasn't sizing them or doing width or anything like that. I basically just did surface finishing and joinery. So let's take a closer look. But before I do that, uh, how about I give you a quick journey of how this thing developed because this wasn't the first toolbox I built. The very first one I gave away with an entire a set of tools when I reached 100,000 on the channel. So I no longer have it to show you, but you know, there's what it looked like. That thing was way too big because everything I read told me that you had to build a toolbox to size your biggest tool. And the biggest tool I was using was this saw right here. But the thing is, I figured out fairly quickly that I don't use this thing that often. In fact, what works just as well and is a lot smaller is something like a jigsaw. <laughs> so that very quickly became decorations and it was a very pricey thing because I was shopping at a place down in Houston, uh, in downtown Houston where you could get thin stock. So like a quarter inch thick and I bought mahogany and a bunch of exotic woods because I was gonna be proud of it. It worked for what it did, it was just way too big. Here's the second one I built, and I'm still using this one today. It too used uh, red oak that I could buy from the big box store. I believe this was a half inch, and I did dovetail the sides. Uh, this was half inch, and this was three quarter of an inch. And what was unique about that is you'll notice that these have bridle joints over here and going down the bottom. And what secured those bridle joints were some pegs just some oak dowels that I made right here. I did find that this was a little bit weak for a lot of the stuff I was carrying because this piece of board, when you're lifting it up, it split on me a couple times. And it's just using a copper dowel with a wood dowel in the middle and just a copper fitting on either side to clamp it in because those were a bit bigger. So it worked out really great. The bottom of this is just slats screwed on to these cross beams right here. So they're just fairly open and very standard. Easy done. Basically, it's all dovetails and bridle joints to build this toolbox. But I can think you can see the problem if you're doing kind of fine woodworking with a tool tote like this, because it's either you're putting all your like chisels in a roll, so you have to pull it out, pull it all out. You just can't reach in, grab, and put back stuff really easy. So it didn't work in my small apartment workshop because really all I wanted to do is set something like this on the corner so I can work, grab a tool, and put it back so it always stayed organized, it always stayed neat, and all my tools were protected. Hence, this custom tool tote. And this thing is neat because it did hold the majority of the tools I was using at the workbench. Little joinery tools, that's what I was enjoying doing at the time. So I had my two gent saws, these are European style saws, and then I had a flush cut and a Japanese pull saw. I had my scrawl all right here that fit there. Then I had a little packet from, I got this from Lee Valley. Uh, it contains a whole bunch of scrapers, which I use quite a bit in the small shop because uh, it's better than sanding. With this out, I can, I have this little tote box I can pull in and out, which open up this entire bottom area which when I went on trips and stuff like that, and to this day I use this, uh, I can put planes and other saws in here. Uh, a lot of times I will store them upright to hold, hold like a, a jack plane or something like that. My smoothing plane, my block planes all lay down. And then this is just kind of a catch-all that I can use right here. Obviously I have all my chisels. 
uh, all the sizes that came with the basic clip kit plus one mortising chisel right here. I have on this side replacement blades because the planes I used at the time, I still do today, are these Lee Valley ones and they basically sell alternative blades with different angles. Like this one I can have a high or low angle so I could use it for uh, smoothing different kinds of woods. They even come with toothing blades which I find are really useful in highly figured wood when you're just roughing the sizes. It, it prevents pretty rough tear out. Not all tear out, but pretty rough tear out. Can you see that? And I also had the two blades for my jack plane. On this side, I also carried a little slot for rulers, you know, pins, you know, compass, that kind of stuff. Over on this side, I wasn't using this marking knife, but I had another marking knife I could put right here. I also have a method of sharpening my tools, these little uh, diamond stones. They just fit right here, plus a easy access square. I was using the Japanese square at the time. I really haven't used this in probably a decade because I, I prefer wooden ones nowadays, but it stays right there. And to this day, whenever I go on trips to family and stuff like that, this is small enough that I can take, you know, drills, my jigsaw, anything I need to do because family members are always going to be asking you to do some kind of work when you show up. It just fits nice and easy and it's kind of a grab and go. What I like about it is anybody can make this. Again, this was one of my first projects that I put a lot of effort into, but nothing on this was complicated. So let me show you the design. Oh, this is kind of funny. When I was unloading it, I found my signature on it. It said that I started it in 09, but didn't finish it until 2012. <laughs> Tells you how long I've had it. What this is, is a simple dovetail box. I've got dovetails all the way around. And if you can catch the light reflecting them, none of them are perfect because this was one of my first projects. You also see that this is basically entirely red oak and pine, plus a little copper for the, for the handles. But in order to get this black finish on here, I put black tea. I actually boiled a couple bags of Lipton tea in a little cup and applied the tea to this, let it dry. I did that for a couple coats. That allowed the red oak to absorb a lot of tannin and then I melted uh, some steel wool and vinegar, and that vinegar will take that tannin and turn it black. That is why you can see little parts of it where the tannins didn't fully absorb that did not get fully black. See, it's a little bit of a splotching and stuff like that, but I kind of like that effect. Next up were these posts, or I don't know what else to call them. You can see that they're on all four corners. But what it is, was I took basically half the distance of the thickness of these boards and I cut in on either side on the top and the bottom. And then I used my uh, router plane and just kind of planed all that down. So these kind of notch in right where that curve starts on the outside. And that curve was done with just a, a handheld router. That same router bit was used to round over all the edges of these so that they're fairly symmetrical and that rounding over because I notched this and not that, it doesn't create any gaps. So basically these four legs were just pushed into the corners. There was never any glue on these. They are still sitting in here loose. The glue happened from the dovetail around the outside and how I did the bottom. Next we come into the interior, which I constructed by first attaching these two sides here and then attaching these two. Because these two sides, which are made up of a laminate, which I'll get to in a second, are actually, they are open right here, but this board right here actually comes about right there all the way over. That way I could attach screws into each one, these two ends on both sides that attaches this along with the glue that's holding the wood to the inside of this right here. So basically I glued and screwed both ends onto it and then I could take these and slide them down and they, will, they sat on top of that little ledge where the screws were holding and clamped right in. 
In fact, because I was using store-bought material and I didn't have a way to thickness it, you might notice on all the corners, I custom fit them a little bit. Can you see that? I had to notch it out a little bit to make them fit on all, all the way around. Now to make up the laminates, I basically laid out all the tools I wanted to hold upright so that they were easily accessible. And then I just would come over here and I would say, okay, I, I would physically lay it down or mark the sides. And then I use the thickness from the router gauge to kind of, from the router plane to get all, all that out. So I would do that to one side of the board and the other side of the board. And you can see the glue line right there for the next board I did. And then I put another, I glued another board on top of that to create this entire section. Every other one is the same exact way. You can see the glue line for one thin board. I attached to a three quarter inch board so I could get all my chisel thicknesses all the way down. Which in hindsight, you really could have taken this board and rotated and glued it to here and used the outside board as that to gain a little more in thickness. But that's only something I figured out after you know, a decade of use. The bottom is a loose board screwed into the two end caps. And if you remember, those end caps are screwed into the legs right there. So that kind of secures all this together in case the outside dovetails, glue joints ever failed, which they aren't even coming close to doing that over all these years of hard use. So that worked out pretty good. I did that one because if I ever got any damage on this one, I, could, I thought I could easily replace it. But as you can see, it's aging well. The final bit is the handle, which is basically copper piping, you know, kind of T-joints and copper things. But there's actually a oak dowel that goes inside them. What's kind of cool is those oak dowels are perfectly sized to these. So you can cut these to the perfect length you need, but drill the hole for the oak dowel and it won't protrude in. I will say that the oak dowel, this one has shrunk a little bit over time, but these kind of just locked it all together. And yes, there's an oak dowel in here and that's why they aren't, haven't bent over time. But basically, I assembled this middle one. These, these are just kind of loose fitting joints put this in and then drove the oak dowels through after it was all assembled. And that's that. It's a highly customizable design that's really easy for somebody, a beginner to work at. Even the dovetails, if you screw them up, well, a dark finish will always hide those kind of imperfections. Uh, warning though, uh, make sure that you sand down your glue before you do this kind of stuff because the tannins won't absorb into the glue and you'll get your glue streaks. It's kind of like when you apply finish or a stain and you have those glue streaks. So you really want to get those joints sanded before you apply the finish. Uh, the other, the box I'm using for my um, uh, chainsaw stuff right now, uh, I did a black uh, poly finish, a Minwax, and I mixed just like a quarter of that black stuff with regular Minwax and it darkened it really well. And that thing has taken some serious abuse and I think it's held up pretty good. This one just has a clear Danish oil finish all over it. Now, uh, this is my kind of older set of tools. I had been thinking about building a new one for all my latest tools and then just keeping this one to go to places where things might get borrowed or lent out or stuff like that. Y'all tell me, well, would y'all like to see me build a new one of these uh, for all the latest stuff I've owned over, collected over the past decade or so? And also tell me if you like this kind of tour of old projects. Uh, I didn't, I don't think I need to show how to make a dovetail because I have a lot of stuff out there. It's just basic little elements a lot of times that will spark interest and give people ideas for what they can do. That's kind of all I was trying to do here. I personally really like having wall tools that I can easily access and this kind of toolbox instead of the big huge ones because I can just pull things out and put them right back in. When you have a tool chest, a lot of times you pull your tools out, you bring them over here, you use them all here, and then you have to put them up. It's not you're putting them up and taking them out as you use them, which something like this allows me to do by just sitting on the side of my workbench or just using the tool wall behind me. But I hope you enjoyed this, learned a few tips and tricks, but in the end, remember, it's always worth the effort to learn new stuff, create new things, and share them with others. Be safe, have fun.
For today's bonus, I want you to take a quick look over at Daisy Tempest YouTube channel. Uh, I found her because I'm kind of investigating building a little mandolin, and she has a lot of good content that's kind of more tailored towards entry-level people into instrument making, not necessarily guitar making, which I really like that. And what hooked me on that one is so many times when she's doing her woodworking and stuff like that, the first tool she picks up is a chisel, and she will just take a chisel and just get rid of the waste and then refine it with other hand tools and power tools and stuff like that. But she's mainly a hand tool woodworker whose tool collection looks a lot like mine, so it kind of gave me the confidence that maybe someday I'll make myself a mandolin. Either way, I'll put a link down below. Below, Go check out Daisy Tempest, especially if you like my hand tool woodworking videos, because there's a pretty good mesh there.